Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com, and this is the video tutorial for using Creation Glitch Effects, which is an After Effects template for creating tons of different kinds of glitch effects for your video footage, ranging from really subtle glitches to the totally messed up examples that you're watching. These effects offer a lot of control over the look and timing and intensity of the glitches. Everything can be customized using convenient slider controls. Uh, the templates include a bunch of custom audio and video effects, glitch texture stock footage, transition effects, and ready to export presets. This has been one of the best sellers at creationeffects.com for years, so I decided to go through and update the entire thing. So now it's 4K compatible, it's cleaner and simpler to use, it has new effects, a new tutorial, new everything. Okay, let me show you how to use this thing. Uh, first, you'll need to unzip the zip file that you downloaded. There is a wrong way and a right way to do it, and the wrong way could lead to a bunch of errors in After Effects. If you're on a Windows machine, be sure to right-click the zip file and choose the Extract All option. If you're on a Mac, you can just double-click it. Then open up the folder, and notice there are both HD and 4K versions, so be sure to select the right one for your project. The HD one will run much quicker. And you'll want to keep a copy of the original project file with all the default settings preserved. So I recommend that you duplicate the template before you start, uh, and then just open up the AEP file in After Effects. After Effects will tell you to convert it since it was made in an earlier version. Um, that's completely normal, just click OK. And another option for accessing the effects, uh, if you already have a project that you're working in, you can import the Creation Glitch Effects template into that project by going to File, then Import, then File again, and choosing the AEP file. And that will put the entire project into a new folder in the project panel. So when you open the template, you'll see some instructions for getting started and Actually, all of the main comps will have an instructions layer at the top, so look for those. You're going to need your Effect Controls panel, so make sure that's available. Uh, you can go to Window and Effect Controls. And your first step is to import your footage and put it in this pre-comp named Your Footage. So I'll go to File and Import and File, and I'll get this clip of this monkey. I'll drag it into the Your Footage comp, and that will let you preview every effect and preset in the template with your footage. I can close that Your Footage comp. So there are two main ways to use this template. Uh, you can go with one of the presets, which will add a combination of pre-selected glitches to your footage, or you can build your own glitch look and select which individual effects you want to use. I think the smartest order to do this is to give you a brief overview of the presets first. Uh, so if you're in a hurry, you can just get right to work. Uh, in the Glitch Presets folder, we have 18 different presets. And the best way to preview what these look like, since they can take a while to load, is the uh, Glitch Presets Preview video, which you can find on the Creation Glitch Effects webpage. That will show you about six seconds of each preset, uh, so you can see what you like. Or you can just open any folder and uh, open the main comp inside. Make sure the resolution is set to half uh, to make it faster. Give it a moment to cache and then you can play it back. So what these presets are, uh, they're a combination of individual effects uh, taken from the different folders up here. The audio effects and video effects and glitch textures folders. And you can customize all of those combined effects at once with a single control on this control layer here. So select that, and then in your Effect Controls panel, you'll see an Intensity control. So you can turn that down to 20 or 10%, and you'll get something much more subtle. And there's also a random seed control. Uh, you can change that to any other value and it will produce new random results for all of the glitches. A quick note just for you CS6 users, uh, these controls will all say missing in their names, um, but don't worry about it. They're all there and they'll, they'll work just fine. Now below the intensity control, we have some controls that you'll, you'll need to understand because 
Uh, you'll find these throughout the template. I've called these the auto on off blinking controls and they make the glitches randomly turn on and off. And you can see we have a minimum and maximum on time and a minimum and maximum off time. Uh, these values are in seconds. So currently uh, this presets effects will randomly turn on for a duration of anywhere between zero and 0 0.9 seconds. Uh, then the effects will shut off for anywhere between 0 and 0 0.9 seconds. And they'll come back on again and off again and on and so on uh, each time for a different random duration within these boundaries that you set. So when the effects are off, um, you'll just see and hear your normal footage, which is this layer down here, your footage without effects. Um, so uh, these will give you a lot of control over how much you see of the glitches uh, while still making them randomly appear. There's more to talk about with these, uh, like how to customize all these individual effects, um, but that will make more sense after going over these other folders in this uh, build your own glitch folder. You can see we have this comp here named main comp, and uh, there's nothing special about this comp. It's just a blank slate. It has your footage in it, uh, so you can just start adding effects in here to create your own unique glitch look. Audio effects, I'll do that last. Uh, let's do this glitch texture folder now, because uh, glitch textures are kind of the backbone for most of the effects in the template. If you open that up, you'll see this video textures folder with 24 different video clips of different glitches. So this this is the good stuff. There's a lot of variety in here. Um, a few of these I made with this template, um, but a lot of them are authentic, meaning I made them by screwing around with the code of video files. So you can use these however you want. You can edit them into your footage or composite them over your footage, or uh, do like I did throughout this template and use them as track mats for your effects. The best way to preview them is just open this comp here, Video Textures Preview, and you can unhide any clip to preview it. The other folder here has custom textures in it, and these were made using a combination of fractal noise effects in After Effects. Uh, so you can customize them um, if you open the glitch texture generator, we have blocks, lots and lots of blocks. Um, that's just this one layer, nothing that special, um, but each layer has a different texture. And when you combine multiple layers and experiment with different blending modes, you can create a lot of interesting looks. And that's what I did with all of these comps in this glitch texture presets folder. These all started out as this glitch texture generator comp. And from that, I created several different looks that you can browse through. And like the glitch footage, um, these are used all over the template as track mats and displacement maps. Or you can just composite them over your footage if you want. You can see if I select a layer and go to the effect controls panel, there are a bunch of these slider controls to customize how the texture looks and behaves. Um, I'm not going to go over all of these, but uh, you got your basic brightness and scale and complexity and random seed. Down here we have the auto on off blinking controls uh, that I showed you earlier. And also these auto pause play controls. These work in a similar way as the blinking controls. So you can see if I play this, the design changes on every frame and then freezes for a little bit and then continues to change. So it's this random uh, pause and play, essentially, uh, which is just how uh, digital glitches tend to behave. So you can customize the timing of that using these controls, which again are in seconds. All right, one more uh, feature to understand in these glitch texture comps. At the top, we have this control layer. And in there, we have another set of blinking controls as well as pause play controls. And there's a checkbox for both to turn them on. These are the global controls, meaning you can use these to control multiple layers together. Without these on, uh, if you have multiple layers visible, they'll all blink on and off or freeze and play independently of each other. But you may want them to all freeze and then play together or blink on and off together. 
So just turn on the global controls and that'll give you control over the entire texture, no matter how many layers you have on. So why is any of this important, you ask? Um, in the majority of the video effects and presets, glitch texture comps like these are used as track mats. So they determine when and where a glitch appears on your footage. Typically, wherever the texture is white, that's where a glitch effect will appear the strongest over your footage. So you might uh, decide you want a certain glitch effect to affect a smaller portion of your footage. Well, then you can just open the glitch texture pre-comp for that effect and decrease the brightness or make whatever customizations. And then there's less white, so less glitch. So next, let's look at the video effects folder. There's over 50 unique and customizable glitch effects, uh, which you can apply to your footage. There are two kinds of effects. Copy-paste effects, uh, which you'll find in this comp, copy-paste effects preview. And then there are pre-comp effects in this folder. Let's look at the copy-paste effects first. Um, these are the easiest to apply. Copy-paste effects are always yellow layers, and each layer is a different effect. Your footage is already at the bottom here, so to preview any effect, you can just turn the layer on. That's interesting. So these effects, you can just copy them and then open up your main comp and paste them in there and uh, place them somewhere above your footage. You can try any combination of these effects. And each one has a bunch of slider controls which allow you to customize the effect. So you have your auto blinking controls to make the effect turn on and off randomly. Um, by default, the on times are all set to 100. So the effects will just stay on constantly. Um, you have your auto pause play controls to make the effects randomly change its property values on each frame for a short duration and then pause its values for a short duration. Uh, and most of these effects have some sort of controls like these which say minimum, maximum, and then some property. So this one, for example, uh, lets you set the minimum and maximum values for the horizontal resolution property. Uh, which is found in this mosaic effect down here. So based on your auto pause play controls, while this uh, layer is playing, After Effects will choose a random value between your minimum and maximum settings. And uh, then when the effect pauses, that value will stop changing momentarily. Also, most of the copy paste effects have this section of controls called manual controls. You can turn that on here, and it'll disable all of those random changes and let you just set one value for each property, and that value will just stay constant. Or you could keyframe the value, and it gives you all the control you could want. If you want to understand any effect better, you can just read the marker notes here. Just double click. So those are the copy and paste effects. Uh, let's look at the pre-comp effects. These are generally more complex, too complex to fit on a single adjustment layer. So I made separate comps for them uh, with multiple layers inside. Each of the pre-comp effects have their own individual folder here, and each effect also has its own Your Footage comp, which uh, by default will already have your footage in it from up here. But since each effect has its own Your Footage comp, it gives you the option uh, to put different footage in, or it lets you combine multiple pre-comp effects, which I'll show you in a second. To customize a pre-comp effect, open up the main comp in any folder and select the control layer, and you'll find all your slider controls in there. Now most of these effects use glitch texture comps, like the ones that I showed you. They're used as track mats or sometimes as displacement maps. So you can see uh, here's a glitch texture comp. Let's preview that real quick. And then directly underneath that layer, we have your footage with a glitch effect. Um, if we look at the drop down menu in this track mat column, this layer is using the layer above it, the glitch texture, as a luma mat. So now any area of the glitch texture comp that is white, that's where we'll see this effect. And areas that are black uh, will just show your normal footage. 
So if you want to change the behavior of the glitch texture comp, like the pause and play behavior, then you can open up the glitch texture comp, um, double click the layer, or you could find it up here in the pre-comps folder. And then you can customize it using the slider controls on the layers inside, uh, like I showed you earlier. However, if you just want to change how much of the effect you see, um, you're probably better off just doing that on the control layer here. Every pre-comp effect will have an intensity control uh, to reduce the strength or sometimes reduce the surface area that the glitch covers. And when you're done customizing, you can just drag this comp into your main comp. And uh, since these pre-comp effects contain your footage inside them, this can just replace your normal footage layer if you want. And then you can add whatever copy-paste effects you want on top of this. And one last thing about the pre-comp effects, um, you may want to combine multiple pre-comp effects to uh, just really screw up your footage. So uh, remember I told you how each pre-comp effect has its own your footage comp. So what you do is called nesting compositions, putting one comp into another comp. So if I want to apply this block pause effect first, and then add the echo saturation effect, I can reveal the your footage comp for this second effect. I'll take the block pause comp and drag it into the your footage comp uh, for the echo saturation effect. And you can do that with as many effects as you want, or at least until your system can't handle anymore. And then just drag the last pre-comp effect into your main comp. <laughs> And also, uh, I should note, you can't duplicate any of these folders. It won't work right. So if for some reason you need to run your footage through a, through a pre-comp effect twice, you'll need to export it, then open a new project and apply the effect a second time. Let me show you one more thing in the glitch presets folder before we move on to the transition effects. Uh, what I'll show you should make more sense now. If I open a presets folder, and open the pre-comps folder inside, you'll see the different pre-comp effects that were used to create this preset. And they'll be numbered so you can see the order that the effects are applied. So for this preset, at the very bottom level, we have a your footage comp. Then this comp is put into this pre-comp effect. So it's inside the your footage comp in here. And then this pre-comp effect is then put into this one and this one into this one, and uh, this last effect is put inside the main comp for the preset here. And you can see we have one yellow copy and paste effect on top of it all. So that's how these presets are constructed. Uh, so you can go into any of these precomps and customize the individual precomp effects. But what's really cool is you can control the intensity of all of these effects together with the intensity control on this control layer. All right, let's move on to the transition effects folder. Uh, there are a ton of transition effects here, something like 70. And when you combine more than one, uh, which I recommend, you get an endless variety of transitions. Just like the video effects, we have copy and paste transition effects and we have pre-comp transition effects. So let's look at the copy paste ones first. Uh, this comp that says classic, these are the original copy-paste transitions that were in the previous version of Creation Glitch Effects. I thought I'd leave them in here to give you some extra choices. But since I was updating all the effects and all the controls, um, there's now this comp that says Updated. So let's open that up. The first thing you'll notice is that all the layers are short clips positioned around here at the uh, five second mark. Each transition effect is made up of two or three layers. There will be one or two video effect layers and one audio effect layer. And those layers will share the same name and the same duration. So that's how you can distinguish one transition effect from the next. So here's one transition, here's another, and you get the idea. Um, now these are all lined up like this so that you can easily preview what they look like. Your footage will be down here at the bottom and if you want uh, for previewing purposes, you can either slide your footage over until a cut occurs right at this five second mark, or you can just create your own little edit. I'll make this into two clips really quick, um, that cut right at the five second mark. 
And now we can solo any group of layers with this little circle icon and preview what the transitions look like. I actually like to use a couple transition effects at a time uh, to make the, the glitch more complex. So to transfer these to my main comp, I can select one transition effect and then control or command click some more layers um, and then copy them all and paste them into my main comp. Then I would find the cut in my footage and uh, put my cursor right on top of it. And then I'll slide the clips over so that the layer markers sync with that cursor. Keep in mind that most of these transition effects can be customized. They have customization controls on the video effect layers um, that you can play with to get different looks. So you can change the random seed and easily get a new random transition effect. Or you can uh, change the blending mode sometimes and get a variety of different looks that way. And if you don't like an audio effect, you can mix and match it with another layer, or uh, just slide the audio layer over and it will play a different part of that audio file. And if you don't like the duration, or if a transition is too short or too long, just extend those layers. The pre-comp transition effects can be previewed in here. When you find one you like, just find its folder. You have your uh, pre-comps folder as usual with a your footage comp inside it. Again, these already have your footage in them by default so that you can preview the transition effect. But this is one time where you will need to change what's in there. So open that up and uh, then we need to make the cut in your footage sync up with a marker here at the five second mark. So put your timeline cursor at five seconds and slide your footage over. Uh, or if you have two clips, you just drag them in here and edit them together so that a cut occurs right at this marker. Then your finished transition will be in this comp here. So you can just drag this to your main comp if you want. Uh, the transition effects comp will be 10 seconds long, but you really don't need that much. So you can trim it to a couple seconds uh, and then you just have to slide it over so that it syncs with your existing footage layer. And that's it. Um, or actually, since this pre-comp has audio on it, you may want to keyframe the audio on your existing footage layer to go all the way down, uh, just for the duration of this transition. And then you can bring the audio back up. That way it won't play uh, double audio. So all the pre-comp transition effects work the same way uh, with the exception of the data mosh effect. That one works a little differently. Um, it's probably the coolest effect in the template, uh, but it's also slower to render because it's so complex. So I made a, a separate tutorial just for that effect if you want to use it. So you can find that on the Creation Glitch Effects webpage at uh, creationeffects.com. Okay, uh, the last folder to show you is the audio effects folder. And the folder in there that you'll probably go to the most is this one, Audio Files. You have 44 wave file sound effects in here and a preview comp to listen to them. That sounds lovely. Most of these are five to 10 seconds long, um, but they're actually set to loop continuously, so they look a lot longer. So you can use these uh, with your effects or put them in the preset comps if you want. Let me show you a, a quick trick actually. I'll open up one of the presets. Each preset has one of those audio clips in here and it's programmed to turn on and off with the video effects um, determined by the auto on off blinking controls. But you can swap this file out with any of the other audio clips and still keep that feature so that the audio turns on and off in sync with the glitches. So just select a layer and then select the audio clip that you want to replace it with up in the project panel. Then hold down the Alt or Option key and drag the file onto the layer. So that will swap out the source of this layer but maintain all of the layer's expressions and settings. And you can use that trick to swap out glitch textures, video files, or whatever. Okay, we also have this folder effects for your audio, 
and this is if you want to add an effect to the audio in your footage. And uh, After Effects is notoriously not so great with audio. You're very limited in what you can do. But I've discovered a few cool ways to mess up your audio. So first, make sure your audio or footage is in this Your Audio Comp. Then open up the comp named Your Audio with Effects. And let's look at the control layer. You have six groups of controls for the six different audio effects. To use any effect, just turn it on with the checkbox and then uh, play with the controls until it sounds good or until it sounds really awful, depending on how you look at it. And uh, then, of course, you have your uh, auto on off blinking controls to make these effects um, turn on and off randomly and automatically. And when these are off, your normal audio will play, which is this layer's audio here. All right, I think I've taken enough of your time. I'll let you start creating your glitches. Uh, enjoy the template. If you haven't checked out the other stuff at creationeffects.com, there's a lot of cool stuff there, uh, like custom oceans. Uh, you can make custom flocks of birds for your shots, or swarms of insects, or schools of fish. There's VHS effects, old film effects, auroras, dots and line networks, ink bleeds, lots of text effects, custom 3D books, and over 40 different art effects for turning your footage into animated artwork. Mm -hmm.